Good morning once again. This is Sam in Montana and today I'm going to talk about chainsaw safety. I've been using a chainsaw for 35 years or so. In Wyoming we always had a wood stove and we went to the mountains and brought back many loads of wood and I've got some experience with the chainsaw. Very dangerous implement. You can hurt yourself very badly so I'm going to try to give you some ideas if you are new to using a chainsaw, how to get into it, okay, and, and get into it safely. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about saw maintenance, starting the saw, uh, and obviously chainsaw safety. I'm going to look at the saw, and if you're selecting a saw, you have some choices there. And I'll go into some detail about that, and I got some ideas. You know, I think it's uh, different if you're 30 years old and you have 25, 30 years ahead of you that you can use this skill. But if you're 60 or 65 and just getting into it, well, maybe an electric saw might be better. And it always depends on what you do as far as uh, wood turning, because this is from a wood turning perspective. I'm also going to feature my saw buck here that I made a month or so ago and there is a video out on it. I'll put a link to that. So let's uh, let's move along and I will cover just a few of the uh, general safety features that are very important when you're using a chainsaw. All right now if you're a woodworker or a wood turner you have some information and knowledge about eye protection, hearing protection. Um, we all wear face shields most of the time when we're turning in case something flies off the lathe at us. So eye protection is a must and you can use just uh, some plastic eye protectors from the hardware store. I've got glasses that's a little bit of protection but what you really need and I very seldom say you need to go out and get this. This is one of those uh, situations. This is a helmet which is really really important. It's got built-in uh, hearing protectors on the side and oftentimes I wear those little plug-in hearing protectors in addition to what's on this helmet. So this uh, helmet also has a visor that you can flip out of the way it's very important when you're chainsawing, you're getting all kinds of uh, chips coming back at you. The helmet part of this is really, really important because one of the accidents you can have with the chainsaw is a kickback. And that blade, that chain can come right back at you and this is really important. These items I'm showing you are not that terribly expensive uh, compared to your eyes and your face and, and all that. So that's a very, very important feature. The next item I would really recommend getting, um, these are shaps, okay? Uh, these are Husqvarna, okay? And they're usually made out of some material that if the chain hits it, it just stops the chain immediately, okay? And I will be wearing these as we go outside and use my saw buck and I'll crank up one of my chainsaws. And these protect your legs, obviously, so we'll strap those on and very, very important, okay? So what's the old saying, an ounce of prevention? Well, you can hurt yourself very badly with any of the machines we have in our shop. Chainsaw is a, a different animal and it takes a little bit of uh, training to get ready to use that. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to show you everything you need to know about a chainsaw and especially chainsaw safety. There are many videos out there, watch five of them watch 10 of them, watch as many videos as you can, get some help from club members. If you know somebody who is experienced with a chainsaw in your club or around you, uh, contact that person, say, hey, can you kind of show me the ins and outs of using a chainsaw safely? What I like to wear 
in addition, this is a, a nice heavy coat, okay? And that'll offer some protection in case something happens and you accidentally uh, run that bar along your, your sleeve, okay? Um, this is a Carhartt coat. And unless it's 100 degrees outside, I'm gonna be wearing something like this, or at least a nice heavy shirt, okay? Um, these are steel-toed shoes, and, and yeah, when I bought them, I didn't really even realize they had steel toes in there, but I'll tell you what, there's some really nice protection there. Wear something as heavy as you can afford on your feet, okay, because that's another uh, kind of a vulnerable area when you're using a chainsaw. Now, oftentimes, I don't wear gloves when I'm using my chainsaw because I can get, um, I feel a better grip on the chainsaw. I did go to the hardware store yesterday and I found these and they're pretty nice gloves. I don't like big, heavy, bulky gloves when I'm using a chainsaw because it's difficult to operate the levers and everything on my saw. These are very nice. They're kind of low profile. They got a, a rubbery grip surface right there, and those are excellent, okay? Very, very important. So, all this stuff, uh, get what you can afford, but buy the best stuff you can in terms of your own safety, all right? Now, let me talk just a little bit about the different uh, chainsaws you can get, okay? Selecting a chainsaw. You're gonna see me using a steel chainsaw with a 20-inch bar. It's really nice if you're cutting some bigger logs up, okay? If you're new to using a chainsaw, please don't go out and buy some enormous monster that's hard to control. Start with a smaller saw. I've got an electric saw, which I love. I usually go to my electric saw first if I can because it's very convenient. There's no gasoline, you plug it in. It does take um, bar oil that lubricates your, your chain in your bar, okay, and that's important. But you can get an electric saw. You can also get battery powered chainsaws now. And when I started 20 or 30 years ago, they didn't have battery operated chainsaws, but they're very powerful, very nice. And I'll show you later on on my electric saw that the minute you release that trigger, it stops. All right, so let's take a look at a couple different chainsaws that I have. You've been looking at my steel. It's a farm boss. It's a very nice saw. I had a steel previously for about 10 or 12 years, maybe longer. And I simply wore it out. I couldn't fix it anymore. This is a saw that I've had for a number of years. This is my electric chainsaw. You plug that in and it's a great saw to have. Here's the bar oil cap. Take that off, put the, the bar oil in there. This is a very nice feature for replacing your chainsaw chain. You simply unscrew that. I'm not gonna do it. And then this is the tension. You can move that. You see how much tension I've got on there? That's not good, so I wanna increase the tension. So there, there is, that's a good position for the tension for my chain on that. So I'm gonna plug my saw in and show you one really important feature of an electric chainsaw. Okay, so here we have the trigger. Over here is a safety catch. You need to depress that so you can, you can actually actuate the chain, make it run. So I'm gonna just show you this very quickly. As I release that trigger, 
the blade stops immediately. That's unlike a regular gas powered chainsaw where the, the, the chain is going to keep moving as the motor turns. So one more time. So as I said, I go to this electric chainsaw often before I go to my, my gas powered one. This is really convenient. It's got the, the brake right there that stops the chain from moving. Yeah, very nice. So you have battery, electric, gas powered, which takes a mixture, uh, an oil gasoline mixture, and that's something very important, but we'll talk a little bit about maintenance. All right, so you're looking at my steel chainsaw with a nice 20 inch bar. A little bit about maintenance. I'm not going to go into great detail on this, but your chain needs to be tensioned properly. And you can do all that over in this side. You take off these two nuts and you can change the, the chain. And somewhere in here there is a, a regular screw head that you can adjust that tension as you put on a chain. Sometimes it gets loose. Now you've seen me many times in this particular video lock my brake right here. Okay, That's locked. You can start the chainsaw when this brake is locked. The motor runs, the chain does not run, does not move. And then you unlock it right there. As you're operating the saw, these spikes right here will contact the wood. You want to cut as close to the chainsaw as possible. You don't want to get out here too far and these spikes need to go into the log that you're cutting. And you can lever the chainsaw bar into the wood with these spikes. On the back side here, if you remove this cover, you'll get to the air filter. And I clean that out occasionally. I'll even wash that in a solvent. So as I start my chainsaw, I need to depress this and move this lever all the way down. That provides more gas at first when you're starting your chainsaw. Once you get going a little bit, you want to move that up to the next position. Now this particular cap is to refill the fuel. And of course you put that on its side and uh, steel chainsaws come with a very nice locking system for these uh, gas fill areas. Over here is the uh, cap for the oil that lubricates the chain. Very important to keep that filled up. Same thing, put that on its side. And we'll check that I'm in good shape there and lock that back down. So please keep in mind that whenever I am running my saw, I've got the chain brake locked unless I'm making a cut. Very important. Let's move on to the next topic and uh, yeah, chainsaw safety, really important. Now I realize there are a couple different ways to start a chainsaw. Here's one of them with the saw on the ground. Probably the safest way. Let's watch that again. Have your foot on the chainsaw to help stabilize that. This particular method is not recommended by uh, chainsaw manufacturers, but it's the way I do it. My chainsaw brake is locked. Now I'm unlocking it. Watch that again. And once my saw is warmed up, it usually takes just one pull of the rope and that starts my saw. And I'll mention it more than once that the only time my chainsaw brake is unlocked when I'm making a cut, and this is a nice little walnut log that I will show you some pictures of one bowl that came from that log. It's a lot of sapwood 
Very little heartwood in that log, but it, oh well. Now I'm going to adjust the the saw buck. Right here I've got the saw buck kind of narrowed down to accommodate that smaller log. And that was a bowl I got from that particular log. This log is maybe 12 or 13 inches in diameter, and I adjusted the saw buck. But here, this log doesn't fit very well in there, so I'm going to adjust my saw buck, tip it over on its side. And I have a chain down there that I can simply put it in a different link, and it either widens or narrows that opening, that space right there where I put my particular log. And I'll go back to this log, which really is uh, a crotch that I cut right down the center of that. And I'm going to make a video showing how I make that particular wing bowl from that log. And here I am cutting that walnut log again. I love this saw buck. It's, uh, it really works really well. Now this little natural edge bowl is actually finished turned. I turn them less than a quarter of an inch to completion and then sand as much as I can. There's really no ideal way to split a log like this. The best way is to have it on its side as I'm cutting right here. And I mentioned before that it's all about the shavings. You get some nice fat, long, stringy shavings when you're cutting it like that. And Coco's checking out my wood pile here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, cutting a log either on end or on its side. All right, now throughout this video, you see me do quite a bit of chainsaw work. And ordinarily, you want to place a log on its side, okay, like in that position. And you want to cut on top of it in this orientation, all right? And it's all about the shavings. If you're getting nice, big, thick shavings like that, it's cutting efficiently. So if you're going to split a log this way, where you'd have a bowl here and a bowl here, you don't want the end grain facing up at you. It's not cutting very well. It's just like dealing with that end grain. So I'm going to take this log. It's already been cut in half, but uh, I'm going to put it in this orientation. And with my saw right here, I'm going to split that log like that. Well, as this video winds down, I'll leave you with a couple parting thoughts. Be careful using a chainsaw. Ask for help. Call me. I'll leave my number up here. I mean call me if you have any questions. Find somebody who can help you. A lot of you won't be using a chainsaw. And that's cool, but I'm a big believer in cutting up wet wood and turning it and rough turning a bowl or another project and letting it dry and getting to it later. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, and above all, be safe. Thank you. Wow, that is cool.